How long before Checo chokes again? Our Mexican Minister of Defense is having a really good run, which is making life difficult for the people making the decisions at Red Bull. Whether that's Helmut Marko or Christian Horner, I'll leave up to them to decide. It was much easier in the middle part of last season when his teammate Max Verstappen was winning everything and he only kept failing to impress. If he keeps up the performance he's doing now, we'll see him at Red Bull a little while longer. But will he be able to do that? I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. Sergio Perez, or as we like to call him, Checo, has been in the Red Bull team since 2021. He started his F1 career at Sauber in 2010. That was 14 years ago, making him one of the veterans on the grid. A few years later he joined McLaren, where he did some wheel banging with his teammate Jensen Button, who wasn't very happy with that then followed a long stint in Force India which became Racing Point, where he did even more wheel banging with Esteban Ocon who was even less happy with that. Later he was partnered up with Lance Stroll and he didn't do any wheel banging then, until Lawrence Stroll kicked him out instead of his son to have Sebastian Vettel in the team. That's when Red Bull picked him up. They had tried to fill the gap that Ricardo left in 2019 with drivers from the driver program, but Gasly and Albon weren't experienced enough to keep that seat. Perez didn't do all that much better, but finished P4 in the standings in 2021, third in the standings in 2022, and second in the standings in 2023. So we could say there is progress. We could also say that the car has made progress towards the rest of the grid. Last season he almost lost his second place to Lewis Hamilton, who wasn't having a lot of fun out there in the W14. Not that that's saying much, because he helped developing the W15 and he's even having less fun now, but that's not what this video is about. Lewis Hamilton had a DNF in Qatar and a disqualification in Austin, so Perez was quite lucky to be in P2. Perez had a similar accident as Hamilton had in Qatar in Mexico, where he cut into the corner on the outside too early and hit Leclerc. He also DNF twice in one race. And it all started so well. Last season we saw Checo win two races out of the first five and that made him a little cocky. He said he'd be able to fight for stopping for the title and things went downhill fast. In Miami 2023 he started on pole while Max Verstappen had to start on P9 due to Verstappen not being able to do a second fast lap due to Leclerc crashing. Perez must have thought that this was a sure win but the race panned out differently. Max had figured out the setup of the car in Baku previously and stormed up the field beating Perez with ease. Checo then started to try to make his car faster by setting it up to enhance his strengths. Unfortunately, this made the RB19 too much of a handful and a series of bad qualifying sessions followed. In Hungary he crashed on the first hot lap he tried to do and it just showed how hard he was pushing while at the same time having so little trust in the car. He got lost in the setup by adding fixes and ways to help him. It cost him dearly in the races too. Especially the crash in Monaco was costly. Not just for the budget cap, but also for the development team. They had tried to keep their floor a secret as long as possible, but the crane lifting the car revealed everything. So the jury of the F1 paddock and social media came to the verdict and it was agreed upon that Checo was washed. Verstappen had it easy and Red Bull needed to put a much stronger driver in that position. Me personally, I was always rooting for Checo Perez because I don't like to change a winning team. And I think Perez is a good driver and a solid bloke. He just wanted a little bit too much. He put that pressure on himself and he choked. How is this season going? Now this season he hasn't won any races and he scored fewer points than last season. But his performance overall is rated much higher. He qualifies pretty close to his Dutch teammate and he scored 4 podiums out of 5 races. He also finished P3 in the sprint race in China. It's just a little ironic that in the one race that Verstappen has a problem and he doesn't finish, he finished P5 in Australia. In any case, he's looking much better and much more confident than last year. The question is, how long can he keep this up? He needs to keep this up if he wants that 3 year deal he's aiming for. The deal that will see him into the new regulations. Perez said in an interview that he's expecting to have the deal sorted soon, within a few weeks, but I think it may be a little while longer before they decide. Christian Horner and Helmut Marko 
both have been very positive about their driver. Horner said as a joke that the good results were most likely because of the contract renewal hanging above his head. Marco said the following. As long as Checo is in as good a form as he is now and he comes with reasonable conditions for an extension, there is really nothing to be said against him. This is why Red Bull is waiting to see if he can keep this up. There's no point in letting him sign a new deal for him to have a slump again. But time is ticking. With the silly season in full swing, if he gets the bad news too late, there might not be another seat available. Are we ready to say goodbye to Checo yet? Well I'm not, I can name 7 drivers that I'd rather lose first. At this stage it's not 100% certain that Max Verstappen will stay at Red Bull, although he has said that he's happy enough in the team even with Adrian Newey gone. If Max was to leave then that would be a great opportunity for Perez to go for a title, depending on who takes that other seat. If it's Carlos Sainz then things could get difficult yet again, although Perez has the benefits of knowing the team through and through. I've heard Alex Albon is still on the radar too, which makes sense as the Thai owners love Alex. Let's not get ahead of ourselves Wimbo, the lineup so far is unchanged. So what is Perez doing differently now compared to the other seasons? From what I've seen in other videos and some interviews is that Perez has given up on trying to change the car to his setup but has copied Max's. He spent the whole test day driving 117 laps tweaking things to his liking and is doing wonders for him on track. He pretty much did a complete reset to find the balance that made him happy. He has put in a lot of hours with his engineer Hugh Bird getting things perfect and above all he has accepted that Verstappen is just faster which has taken a lot of pressure away. In that department it's all looking good for El Checo, but there's one big if and that's his consistency. Perez has always been a good driver, but even in the very quick racing point car he never strung a series of 10 good races together. There have always been reasons for it and there are plenty of other drivers that haven't done that either. But this season is crucial for his future. I'm afraid that he'll get that one unfortunate quality session and then an incident in the midfield that will ruin his whole race. That single bad weekend might set him on one of those spirals again that he'd just gone on top of. If he then gets a phase that he had after the fifth race last season, not just his good results this season are in jeopardy, but also his new contract. If he doesn't get a contract at Red Bull, then every team after that is an enormous step down with which no driver other than Bottas enjoys. If anything, the pressure is building for the 34 year old Mexican. Will he be able to deal with that pressure? Please let me know in the comments. It would take a lot of pressure off me if you hit subscribe. Take care now. Doo doo.